Hi, Jeff of the Bennington Oakland Valley Railroad. Just going to show you into a little layout tour of the layout. It's in behind this door in my 10 by 13 foot room in my basement. See, it's a concrete block foundation basement here. So, unfinished, aside from the layout itself. It's been uh, Working on about three years, so as you can see, I'm going at a pretty slow pace. Got a lot of track laid, but um, I haven't got a lot of scenery yet. But, uh, it's a TCC layout. Um, started with a power cab, upgraded to a Smart Booster 5, 5 amp Smart Booster with a Pro Cab. And, uh, A 10 by 13 foot room. And, uh, it's got two doors, including a door to a utility room. I kind of had to, couldn't make it go all the way around, so it kind of, it's kind of a, uh, like, I guess like a J kind of a shape. So the Bennington Echo Valley Railroad, it's a fictional railroad obviously. But uh, it depicts uh, a uh, class one line that runs between Omaha, Nebraska, a modern line that runs between Omaha, Nebraska, and across Nebraska, all the way out to the uh, Wildcat Hills in western Nebraska. So Nebraska's a big state, a lot to try to be picked in a 10 by 13 foot room, but I'm trying. Um, I have actually started on a second tier, which uh, will obviously let me expand considerably, but that's probably well into the future, <clears throat> aside from the, the framework itself. But uh, some of the features, um, a little thing I've got here, downtown Omaha, downtown Omaha, as you can see very much a work in progress too, got kind of a mock-up of the skyline going on there. So the Walders uh, Union Station kit's actually, a, the prototype's actually in Omaha, it's the Burlington Station, so it works perfectly. Uh, this is the Burlington Station. Um, a 10th Street Bridge actually runs to the west adjacent to Burlington Station, and another fictional aspect is the presence of a, uh, of a streetcar line that runs down that, that, uh, that bridge. Uh, just have a little circuit that I run here. Um, we actually have a DC, um, independent DC connection here that I uh, run off of my my PC power supply that I use for powering accessories. That's driving the uh, the streetcar. Not totally fictional down the road. Actually, Omaha just approved recently a streetcar line that won't be going down the 10th Street Bridge, but there will be a streetcar in Omaha in the next few years. That's kind of exciting for Omaha. So a streetcar will provide service to the Union Station, where there will also be uh, service for the <coughs> Amtrak California Zephyr, which you can see running here. So that's the one uh, prototypical example that actually does run on the layout, is the California Zephyr. And you probably noticed the 4014 running with the excursion train. Uh, but it's an Elko Valley Railroad, in fact, acquired Union Pacific in the fictional world <laughs> that I'm building. So, fortunately, 4014 exists in the uh, Bennington Elkhorn Valley Railroad. Um, so, adjacent downtown is uh, something I'm working on here is a little yard. And uh, one of the main focal points is, uh, is the big roundhouse here, which obviously there's no roundhouse in downtown Omaha. But what uh, model railroader can resist not having a roundhouse? So, this will be kind of the engine maintenance facility here. Um, so, uh, actually got all the track weight for that. I'll actually begin doing some scenery here. Obviously, it'll be a lot easier to, to, uh, to do the scenery for a, uh, a locomotive facility. But I'll probably put in the stuff like the, the usual welding effects and, and things and some little scenes going on. But um, it's not a lot of industry yet on in the layout. Um, I do have the uh, Walters. Uh, concrete plant here over a little siding here 
um, off to the side. Um, better view of uh, downtown. This is sort of a rough depiction of what it actually looks like between uh, the Burlington Station and the and the actual Union Station, which is to the north across the across the tracks from uh, Burlington Station. It's conspicuously absent here. I'm not sure if I'll try to model that or if we'll just uh, have a, a photograph or something. But, uh, I do have a small siding here, which I'll probably put like a little salvage yard or something, I'm thinking. Um, one of the first things I actually did was uh, was the Elkhorn River here. Uh, it's a little dusty at the moment, but um, so this is the Bennington Elkhorn Valley Railroad, and uh, Elkhorn uh, to the west of Omaha. Um, my wife and I actually like to go kayaking, so I made sure and put a couple of kayakers in there. So, uh, as you move west, I do have a, uh, I do have, of course, a, a prototypical grain elevator out in Nebraska, um, nearby, uh, a, uh, propane, uh, dealer as well, off another siding, and, uh, so, yeah, we'll have, uh, a couple industries out here, um, got the, uh, Got the wind turbine from my son. Unfortunately, the motor, the, the German motor, <laughs> uh, in fact, did not actually work. Um, so I'm waiting to get a motor that uh, that I can use to power the wind turbine. Backdrop, obviously, that's something else conspicuous here. I did put in the uh, the backdrop here, but uh, I haven't put any clouds or any other scenery in the backdrop. That's I'm kind of picky about how that's going to look, so it's probably going to take some time for me to get up enough nerve to decide what I want to do for the backdrop. But obviously here there will be a wind farm in the background uh, uh, to kind of back up that one that my son got me there. And then as we go west, uh, again, there's the Wildcat Hills. Uh, a lot of people don't realize there are, in fact, hills in, in Nebraska. It's not all flat. Um, here's a little... Uh, Creek called Soldier Creek. There is a Soldier Creek in western Nebraska. It doesn't have a train bridge on it, but uh, I thought I'd go ahead and take the opportunity to add one. Uh, another thing that's that's interesting is Nebraska um, actually had one tunnel called Belmont Tunnel. Um, it, in fact, just in the last, I don't know, 20 some odd years got bypassed by Burlington Northern, uh, so it's no longer used. But, but again, what model railroad are you know, would want to have a railroad that doesn't have some tunnels on it. So I've got a couple tunnels here um, that uh, actually serve as the turnaround for the layout. Um, I won't show you what's behind the wall, but in fact it's a, just a small, like I say, a turnaround. Um, the plan in the future is to actually put a helix back there, which would then take, you know, the, look at the trains up to the second tier here. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I think what else here, I, this was actually this little yard here I put in, it's one of the first things I put in, I'm not real happy about the way it turned out, I don't know if I'll redo it or not, but I need to get the scenery, so I might just leave it the way it is, and, and uh, as I say, I use the NCE uh, DCC equipment, been real happy with it, like I say, I started with the power cab, highly recommend it, the starter kit for starting out, uh, I ran enough. Uh, I run enough locomotives now. I decided I needed more power, so I get the smart booster, the five amp smart booster, um, which has worked real well. I'm very happy with it. Um, added fascia board, uh, which uh, happy with the way that turned out. Um, literally, the most recent thing I did is I just installed this cheap uh, work space here, which I found at a at a uh, discount store, um, otherwise I didn't really have anything to, to sit at and work at, um, so I finally have a little bit of working space in the layout room here. Um, I think what else? Um, but, uh, this is obviously, you can probably tell, uh, this is all Atlas flex track that, that I've used. Um, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people think Atlas is kind of crummy, not the best quality stuff, you'd, you'd rather go with the Pico stuff, 
Um, it's, it's inexpensive, but uh, that's, that's the big thing for me. I actually got a whole bunch of this stuff um, from a fellow whose father passed away. Um, so I was happy to, to take all that off of a, a guy from Craig, down at Craigslist who sold it to me really inexpensive. And I'm happy to continue on as uh, his father's uh, um, dream to, to have a layout here. So I'd like to take the continuing that for you know, someone else. Uh, um, but uh, I've, I've been pretty happy. It, I've had to work through some issues. In fact, if we wait, if I keep going long enough, I'm probably pushing my luck. I'll probably see something derail here. But, um, but uh, so I've had to, you know, over time I've had to uh, identify little uh, flaws in my track work and and, uh, and uh, address those. But um, I've been pretty happy otherwise. So with the atlas. It, track or the switches and everything it's uh um, it's very inexpensive i got a lot of it second hand as well um, so i saved a lot of money uh, yeah one oddity i've got here is i've actually got the kato cro double crossover here which i worked into the atlas track um and because uh, i couldn't find anything that was real as nearly as inexpensive as as, uh, as this particular double crossover um but uh, as far as the town of Bennington, that's going to be right here. Bennington has a that exact same water tower. There's actually a Bennington Badger as the school mascot. I've got to put on the side of it. Um, so I've got to get that done as well. So lots of work to do. I haven't done a lot of progress. But as, like a lot of people, maybe uh, winter tends to be my uh, the time when I um, spend you know, spend the most time with the layout. So. We're getting into winter, so I'll probably spend more time. Like I say, I, I uh, well, maybe I didn't say that. I, I just kind of finished the track work on the on the locomotive facility here, so probably gonna you know really start into the ballasting and uh, and whatnot um, in this particular area of the layout and uh, get some scenery going. And um, looking forward to actually doing the scenery part of it. So, um, as I guess I alluded to earlier, I did I did install a uh, a 12 volt um, PC power supply in behind here. There's actually a separate video I have on my YouTube channel if you want to look for that. Um, I actually think that's a really economical way to power accessories. And along the same token, um, the little uh, 10th Street streetcar here, like I mentioned, is on a separate DC layout, a DC circuit, I should say. And I've actually got uh, a little knob here that lets me control the speed and completely turn it off. Um, and a separate power and direction switch there that's controlled. And that's just running off of that power supply from the 12-volt uh, the uh, PC power supply that, uh, that I use. I shouldn't say 12-volt, there's all sorts of different voltages coming off of it. So it's really useful for running lights and things. And looking forward to, to doing that too. But... Um, yeah, that's uh, Bennington. I didn't mention that being a whole lot about the Bennington Elko Valley Railroad. Uh, there's kind of its colors. It's kind of a green color with a modern B. Um, slowly, uh, not adding, I haven't added a lot of locomotives, but it's slowly, uh, once in a while you'll see a UP locomotive there. Um, oh, and there's another. The uh, GB uh, Standard Turbine is actually another of the uh, fictional um, heritage fleet that uh, Bennington Elko Valley Railroad inherited from uh, Union Pacific. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of it. Uh, that's my little 10 by 13 corner of my hobby world. Um, it's, uh, really enjoyed it. And it's a dream of mine since I was a kid to get a layout up and going, and um, I've got a lot of inspiration from all the other YouTubers out there, so thanks to all of you that post on YouTube as well, um, it uh, really uh, helps a lot seeing all the things that, uh, that all the rest of you guys are doing on your YouTube channels, um, so anyway, I think that's pretty much it. Um, uh, Thanks for watching.